like to welcome um, Scott um, Heisley yeah. <laughs> to the show today. Um, um, did you grow up around music? I did grow up around music. I grew up mainly uh, in church around music. Um, it was a Pentecostal church. So there was always a lot of music, a lot of piano work. Even though I never did learn how to play piano, but uh, there was always always music in my family. So, and it, I guess it kind of grabbed on to me. And then growing up, my dad would listen to uh, some of the older George Jones, Merle Haggard stuff, while my mom was listening to the Ronnie Millsaps and Kenny Rogers, and it just kind of grew on me. And, and from then on, I just started playing. Um, did your family members? Um play music too? Yeah. Uh, my Uncle John on my dad's side, uh, he played banjo for the Dry Branch Fire Squad, which is a bluegrass band, and uh, I used to go when I was a kid, go and watch him play banjo, and, and uh, it always intrigued me, and he's, he's probably one of the major influences for me playing country music was, was him. So, my, as far as my other part of my family, other than my grandmother and grandfather, nobody had played except me and my Uncle John, and so it worked out pretty good. <laughs> did um, you ever wrote a song that you um, regret um, that you didn't record? Yes, there's a lot of songs I've written that, uh, that I regret I didn't record. <laughs> Mainly because when I was growing up, you know, you didn't have the money to go to the studio like you did before, you know, and uh, so yeah, I regret it. But uh, now that you know, I've been pursuing my music career. I'm getting back in the studio, recording those songs that I that I did forget about and overlooked. Uh, really. Have you ever been in the studio and they wanted you to think out of the box, like they like the song, but they wanted to do it, do it, do it a way. little different way? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's what the, the good part about hiring a good producer is. And Greg Cole produced my last two albums, which is a, he's a great producer. He produced Ray Price, uh, Ken Mellons, uh, Daryl Singletary, and all three of those are, are great artists. And I love his country ear. So I value his opinion a lot. So when we are in the studio, he does throw a lot to the, bring a lot to the table as far as I should do this and do that. So yeah, it works out good that way. Okay. Um, what makes you different than any other country singer? Today? That I'm, I'm country <laughs> and they ain't. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I, I, I try to keep traditional country and uh, in this day and age with the country radio today, I just don't see the traditionalism that was, you know, like the Keith Whitley's and the, uh, the Haggard's, and I just don't see it on the radio anymore. And so, you know, I, I still try to keep them country roots. So that, I, that, that sets me apart, I believe, from everybody else on the radio today, I believe. How can uh, people go and listen to you? Um, actually, I've got a lot of resources as far as my music goes. Uh, if you'd like to purchase my albums, you can go to cdbaby.com, you can go to conquer.com. Also, you could also go to, uh, I'm on iTunes, um, Spotify, Pandora, um, all the major download spots you can get my stuff. Um, so, I mean, just Google search me and I'm pretty much everywhere on the, on the internet. When um, people uh, buy a tribe, um, does some of the money go to charity or? Like feed the hungry. Or? Not, not this one. No, um, I have worked a lot of uh, charity organizations. I do a lot of uh, stuff for uh, Relay for Life, uh, the cancer, uh, uh, it's a cancer group, I guess. Relay for Life. Uh, I used to do concerts for them quite a bit here in the uh, Virginia area and West Virginia. And uh, I would like to get more into the uh, the Make a Wish Foundation. And so I'd like to, you know, get more into that. Um. Since you've been in the country business, um, what have you learned, like, to get from A to B? Uh, pretty much to get from A to B is just uh, pursue. I mean, you, Nashville, the, where you are, I live, you know, it's just, it's always full of disappointments. It's always, you know, it's all the time, you know, it's hard. It's a hard business, and uh, that, that's the hardest part, I think, is just staying focused and dedicated and just to keep pursuing if they, if they throw you off the horse by saying no just jump back on and keep on going you know that's just the way and if it wasn't for my fans I 
I've probably given up a long time ago, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, in 2013, um, he was on the top ten, mm -hmm. and um, with uh, Lady Alabella and um, the Zach Brown man. Mm -hmm. um, how did that make you feel? It always makes me feel good because knowing that my fans are out there voting for things like that and that have the, you know dedicated to me and have great fans and uh, and true country fans. I mean, to me, that's telling people out there that they do want traditional country music and they want the country music to come back. So yeah, it makes you feel great. You know, to be in somebody at that caliber, to be at the top. You know, people of that caliber. So. I'm gonna turn the show over to you. All right, I'll let you. I'm gonna do a. My newest single, which is Addicted, and it's coming out. Uh, it's actually coming out this end of this year, and so uh, keep an eye out for that. And uh, I'll give you a little taste of what it's going to sound like, just acoustic-wise. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm addicted. It's true, need my morning fix, night time or two, when it gets down, loving you, I'm addicted, I feel the rush running through my veins, racing my heart. Crashing in my brain I know I'm crazy Going this insane But I'm addicted Thanks for having me. I appreciate you very much. <laughs> See y'all out on the road. <laughs>